Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The scripture says, let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. And we certainly ought to have a praise for the Lord. God is good to each and every one of us. And we should magnify and lift up the name of Jesus because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are saved. So we do want to give glory and praise unto the Lord for waking us up this morning. It's a glorious day outside and starting us on our way for giving us what we need in order to survive. Uh, not just survive, but God gives us things to thrive. And we certainly do praise the Lord uh, for his great and mighty acts, especially those that he has shown toward the children of men. So we want to uh, go before the Lord in prayer. I'm sorry we don't have the praise team on today. The, the, <laughs> I was going to say the first responders, they forsook me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But they need a break, too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. They didn't forsake me. They uh, off visiting uh, family members and such. And so uh, this is a holiday weekend, and um, we certainly do take concessions for that. And uh, we certainly do praise God. Uh, that uh, he's allowed us to be here, amen, amen. and allowed us to come together uh, one more time. Uh, if I were to sing a song, it would be, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be, amen. So we want to certainly go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, in doing that, we want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. And um, I'm excited uh, because uh, even on uh, next week, uh, we're going to uh, be further opening up our services. Uh, our plan is on starting on Sunday uh, of next week, we're going to have two services to accommodate our congregation uh, so we can maintain those social distancing uh, rules. Uh, members of Christian Ministries should have received a, a correspondence uh, from the pastor. And if you haven't, if you're on this broadcast, uh, hit me up, text me up, call me up, let me know, and I'll, I'll be sure uh, to get you out the information. Uh, we're going to have two services, uh, our morning glory starting at 9 a.m. Uh, to uh, 10.30, and then we're going to have our, our morning worship service beginning at 11 to 12.30. And uh, both services will be the same. There won't be uh, any changes in it. We're suspending our Sunday school, uh, but Deacon Fields is still uh, posting our Sunday school lesson. We're suspending the Sunday school until we're fully able to open up to accommodate everybody. Um, so um, we do want people to come back to the house of the Lord to worship. God has never uh, wanted us to stop worshiping together. Uh, the scripture says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves as the matter of some is, because there's strength in unity. There's love in unity. And when we see each other, we get strength. Um, there's a scripture that talks about when I saw the brethren, I took courage. I took heart. I took strength. When I see the saints of God coming in to worship God in spirit and in truth, it makes you strong. It gives you hope and the fellowship and the love that we have one toward another. So uh, we don't want to continue to isolate ourselves. We want to keep ourselves safe. And so therefore we have new parameters, uh, wearing of our masks, the washing of our hands, putting on the hand sanitizer. And um, if you're sick, you know, stay home. Thank you, Lord. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you don't feel well, your immune system is down for your sake and for the people uh, around you's sake. You know, stay home, get well, get stronger. Uh, no sense in uh, putting yourself or, or anyone else through hardship and pain and things like that. Uh, so, you know, do what's right. And um, uh, we also, uh, we're trying to, by then we're gonna uh, get a thermometer 
Uh, we're going to have somebody at the back door, you know, taking people's temperature and things like that. So um, we just want everybody to be safe. And what we're doing, we're doing it uh, in, a, in a way wherein we can glorify God in, in the midst of this particular time. Thank you, Lord. And then um, this too shall pass. Uh, this won't always be the way it is now. So um, one thing we know that this is not the first time that there's been pandemics in the world. It's not the first time that uh, uh, people have suffered because of such sickness and disease. But people are resilient because your God that you serve is resilient and you're able to bounce back. So we want to pray for everybody, men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Um, uh, we want to take uh, any prayer requests. Thank you, Lord. If anybody in the audience has uh, any audience, <laughs> anybody have any prayer requests? I bet. Amen. Amen. Man, it took me five weeks to say that. <laughs> Thank God for Corona. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But we do. We give God thanks because God is going to do some great things. Amen. Symphony? All right, I'm going to pray for your brother. Amen. Amen. We had a special prayer request uh, that she wants people to pray for her brother, Sister Cora. I like to pray for my aunt, Josephine. Um, she lives in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So pray her strength. She's dementia sunset, and she has to just pray, pray my strength for my family down there also, and that, you know, God's will be done in her life. Yes, yes. Certainly, certainly we'll pray for your aunt. Amen, that the Lord will bless her and give her what she needs. Uh, let us pray for all of our family members and our loved ones, uh, all the same. And then let us also pray uh, especially for those that are grieving and bereaving and are going through. Uh, let the church stand and let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for the power of God, this opportunity for us to gather together, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you, Lord, that you bless us, that we forgive those that have trespassed against us. We ask you, Lord, that you forgive us for every word, thought, deed, and every secret thought in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known to you. Bless our family members, bless our loved ones, bless even our enemies in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you comfort those that are sick, those that are afflicted and going through in their bodies in the name of Jesus. Those that have lost loved ones, thank you, Lord, and lost friends. We ask you, Lord, that you comfort their heart and their mind in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, hallelujah, that you'll continue to show yourself strong, that you'll continue to show yourself mighty, that you'll rebuke death and rebuke the devourer. Lord, we come on this day to give you thanks, to lift up the name of Jesus, to magnify the name of the Lord. Lord, we give you honor, glory, and praise. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we ask you that you bless the further part of our service. Send forth your anointing. Send forth your glory. Send forth your power. Give us what we need for this hour in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke death. We rebuke the devourer in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We certainly do praise and give God thanks. Amen. Uh, uh, right now, we we'll normally turn it over to our choir, our praise team. Amen. But uh, we won't do that at this time. But we certainly, uh, certainly give God thanks and praise for what he is doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord. It's a good thing to be on the Lord's side, especially in this time and this season. It's good to draw nigh and draw close to the Lord. Because when you draw nigh and close to the Lord, he can help your mind. He can help your spirit. 
Amen. Uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time watching the news and, and hearing about uh, the pandemic, the social distancing and the injustices that are going on in the world. And if you spend too much time with that, you can uh, certainly cloud your mind and give you a lot of anxiety, give you anger and so forth and so on. But the word of the Lord says that he will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. The Lord himself said, in the world you're going to have tribulation. But Jesus said, I give thee peace. Thank you, Lord. Not as the world give, it, give I unto thee, but I give you my peace. Amen. Amen. Who wouldn't want the peace of the Lord? Hallelujah. The peace that passes all understanding. And I'm thankful unto the Lord because he gives us courage. He gives us strength. Amen. Especially in times like these. We need some courage, don't we? Yeah. We need some strength, don't we? Hallelujah. Especially in times like these. And it's the Lord. He gives courage and he gives strength. So uh, I won't be before you long on today. Thank you, Lord. And um, we want uh, people to remember uh, that um, uh, we want you to give unto the Lord, um, uh, give unto uh, the church, and so that the church is able to move on, especially in these times, in these times of need. The church still needs to pay its bills, and the near church needs to take care of responsibilities. So uh, we want you to continue to give through tithely, electronically. Uh, many people have been using that form, and it's quick and it's easy and it's uh, convenient. And also to, you know, bring your tithes and your offering to the sanctuary, to the house of the Lord. And also, uh, we want you to drop them in our drop box and uh, it's secure. Thank you, Lord. And then also, you have the opportunity to mail it to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. And people have done all means what I've just described to you and have been successful in, in sowing seed. Uh, especially, it's good to sow seed in these times so that you can reap a harvest. It's springtime. Thank you, Lord. And it's good to sow seed in the springtime. People are planting grass so that the grass can spring up. Uh, people are planting flowers and planting vegetables. And that's what I need to do. I need to plant me some vegetables. One day I'm going to get my mind together, plant me some vegetables. Amen. Uh, my dad used to plant them greens uh, in the spring. He'd keep them there until fall. His thing was let the first snow hit them, and then they're ready. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I believe that's a southern thing. Thank you, Jesus. But, but, uh, but if, if he never would have planted the seed, he'd have never reap the harvest. If, if you never plant a seed, you will not reap a harvest. And God is faithful. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know God is faithful? Thank you, Lord. God is faithful. We serve a faithful God. Uh, so I want you to uh, turn with me. Glory be to God. Uh, turn with me to the book of St. Daniels. The book of St. Daniels. And, and next week's service, uh, we're going to open up. We're going to have song and have testimony. Thank you, Lord, uh, for, of the people. Uh, more or less, um, we're still going to have an online presence. Uh, uh, so that will still go on. And we're going to sing songs of Zion, give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. But today we're going to have a kind of like a conducive uh, kind of service. Um, uh, so we're just going to have so not just, <laughs> we're going to have the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, because y'all don't want to hear me sing. I know that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I can make a joyful noise. You know? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, so I want you to turn with me to the book of St. Daniels. The book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Amen. Daniel chapter number 11. The prophet Daniel, chapter number 11. And uh, from that uh, particular book, Daniel chapter 11, 
I want you to uh, drop down with me to verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 uh, and verse 32. Daniel was a, a mighty prophet and indeed that truly walked with the Lord. And when you read Daniel chapter number one, it tells you about the integrity of Daniel and how he truly, in the midst of captivity, gave his heart to follow after the Lord. And that, that, that always has stuck with me uh, from a young man when I uh, read those scriptures. Though uh, people uh, may be in doing different things, Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they didn't give in to peer pressure. Uh, historians say Daniel was probably about 17 years old when they, Israel was taken into captivity by the Babylonians. And uh, he grew up in the midst of them and they spent 70 years uh, in Babylonia. Uh, but Daniel remained faithful unto God. He never gave in to peer pressure. He never gave in to what everybody else was doing. He stuck with the commandments and the word of the Lord. And that's encouraging uh, for our young people. Uh, you, can, you can not give in to peer pressure. If you have faith and confidence in God, stick to that, walk with that, stand out, amen. They may talk about you, they talked about Jesus, but everything will be all right. So God used Daniel in, in prophecy, and uh, especially in this 11th chapter. This 11th chapter, the prophecy that we're about to read has literally already came to pass. And, his, and it boggles the mind of the historian. When I was doing my background check uh, and study on this particular lesson, uh, the commentaries were, were, were saying that, um, that through this uh, prophecy in chapter number 11 that Daniel was giving, about what was going to take place. It took place verbatim as the word of the Lord came to Daniel and he begins to prophesy to the people about what was about to take place. And that's encouraging. Uh, the scripture says, Jesus himself said, not one jot, not one tittle shall pass away until all of God's word be fulfilled. And that, that, that just encouraged my heart to let us to know that what we're in, we're in the word of the Lord. And, and the word of God is true. The word of God is steadfast. The word of God is un unmovable. In other words, you can build your hope on the word of the Lord. You can put all your eggs into this one basket, amen, and truly come out more than a conqueror. I'm excited. I'm excited about God's word because it says it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And this word was given unto us by divine inspiration. It's inspired by God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness that the man, woman, boy or girl may be thoroughly furnished, hallelujah, built up in the word of God. So as we move on, thank you, Lord. That's my little introduction. Hey, glory. As we move on uh, to Daniel chapter uh, number 11, and I want you to drop down with me to verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. And the scripture says, and such as do wickedly, against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I'm going to read that again. Thank you, Lord. It says, And as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. And it's just us, it's just us that's here 
Thank you, Lord. So I want to read it one more time uh, so it get good in your hearing. It says, and as such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And I want to take a thought uh, just from the part B of that scripture that says, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And my subject for today would be doing great exploits in the name of Jesus. Doing great exploits in the name of Jesus. And when that particular prophecy, as we've already stated, that this is a prophecy uh, concerning Daniel. And this particular pro prophecy has already come to pass. But uh, there's a statement in there uh, which says, uh, talks about uh, the wicked, talks about people doing wickedly. And it says that he that doeth wickedly, he that doeth wickedly, and give in to people that do wickedly. It talks about, and they shall know their God. And I want to talk to you today about that particular scripture. And it says, and as such as do wickedly against the covenant, he, he shall corrupt by flatteries. And that he there, I want to identify who that he is that is going to corrupt. He that is going to corrupt. And that he refers to a king, a king uh, that was a heathen king that really didn't know God. And the scripture says that he was out uh, conquering and doing battles and he had lost a battle on his way back to his homeland. And on his way back to his homeland, he stopped by Israel. And he stopped by Israel with anger in his heart and, and, and filled with wrath, if you allow me to say it, and trickery. So what this king did, he uh, coerced the unfaithful Jews or the unfaithful people of God who forsook the covenant of God by giving them false promises. And uh, he forsook, the, the, the people forsook their God. Why? Because they didn't understand God's word. They weren't truly invested in the covenant of God. And because of their lack of investment, because of their lack of involvement in knowing God and his word, they were overtaken by the king by his flatteries, by his promises, promises of wealth, promises of power, and things such as that. They forsook God. And what kind of drew the line in the sand was that he was a person who went into the temple of God and he offered up a sacrifice upon God's altar. And, and that was truly a no-no, that, that a heathen would not enter into the house of the Lord and offer up a sacrifice on God's holy altar. And, and they should have taken an affront to that because of this heathen man would come into the house of the Lord and not off only offer up a sacrifice, but what he offered up was he offered up pig's blood upon the altar of God. And to, to just to put that into perspective, that would be like a, a person of the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, coming into the house of the Lord and putting a big swastika upon the altar and daring anybody to stand up against it. It would be like 
somebody that, that was racist and coming in to your house and taking over your house, calling you all kind of racist names. You would take an affront to that. So this particular king, he came into the house of the Lord and, and, and literally swayed those that were not in covenant relationship with God to go along with his evil and wicked plan. My brothers and sisters, we ought to watch out for evil influences. We ought to watch out for people that have uh, ulterior motives. And they can come up against you with their alternative motives through fattery words, through words of pie in the sky. They try to promise you everything, but take away everything that you have. Doesn't that just sound like the devil? Thank you, Lord. That's the way the devil operates. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But the Bible says, but these or those that knew their God, they did great things exploits. In other words, they that trusted in God, they resisted the evil and fought against this wicked king and prevailed. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, people that are brave, that are brave, that are brave, that, that are willing to go through the battle, that are willing to fight, hallelujah, they, they are able to overcome the enemy. In other words, people that are brave in their heart, they go to battle. They fight against those things that are evil. They go to battle and fight against those things that are wicked. Uh, we have to, my brothers and sisters, develop a mind of a champion. The mind of the champion tells you that when you're going into battles that, that God is with you that God would never leave you, that God will never forsake you. We have to understand that, that when hard times come and when situations come, we have to be strong in the Lord. And this strength here, it talks about a spiritual strength. It talks about being strong spiritually. Uh, we can be mentally strong, we can be physically strong, but still lose the battle. But when a person is spiritually strong, it gives you the courage not only to stand against wickedness, but in the midst of wickedness to still do good. Uh, a lot of people got to realize and understand that God, he is a God that wants you to stand up against wickedness, but he also wants you to do good in the midst of the battle, in the midst of what you're going through. So that requires a heart of a champion. When we look at David, David, he possessed that heart. He had a relationship with God. Those that have a relationship with God, they can be able to know their God, know that their God is able to do exceedingly, know that their God is able to do abundantly, above all that they're able to ask or think. When you know God, when you know God, know God in having a relationship with him, it makes all the difference. When you know God in having a relationship with him, it makes all the difference. People that have a relationship with God, they don't fellowship with the enemy as other people would do. When people have a relationship with God, they, they study God's word. They become strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. They don't have to look to the left nor to the right because they know that their God is greater. He's greater than every obstacle that would come their way. When people have a relationship with God, they know that what the enemy offers them is nothing to be compared to what God offers offers them. Y'all know the story about Jesus after he had got tempted in the wilderness. He had the heart of a champion. When the devil came to him and told him in his midst of his hunger, my God, that's what the enemy, he wants to do. He wants to attack you in your weakness. He wants to attack you in your weakest hour. But Jesus said, Thank you, Lord. When the enemy came to him and said, make these stones bread, 
Jesus put the word on the enemy. He put the word on the devil and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When the devil came to Jesus and took him up to a high pinnacle and tried to get him to tempt the Lord God by telling him to cast yourself down and the angels are bear thee up. Jesus, he being strong and mighty, did great exploits by resisting the devil and said, told him, thank you, Lord, that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. And him thou shalt only serve. And when the enemy came to Jesus and took him up on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, Jesus Thank you, Lord. He resisted the temptation of the enemy by doing great exploits because he had a relationship with the Father. Thank you, Lord. That's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to hurry your success. He tries to give you what God has promised you on a different route. But don't you know that they that wait upon the Lord, hallelujah, they shall renew their strength. Hallelujah, the devil tries to get it to you quick in a hurry. But don't take it quick in a hurry because the enemy is looking for something in return. If you give in unto the devil, you become his servant. If you give in to the devil, you become his property. My God, and then he will take advantage of you. My God, and the Bible says that the fool that have said in his heart, Ah, that there is no God. Now notice what the scripture says, that they are corrupt, they are abominable, and they do evil works. My God, my friend, when you forsake the covenant of your God, when you forsake the word of your God, my God, there's no hope. Uh, but for an individual that forsakes the covenant and the word of God to do evil, to do unrighteous works. Hallelujah. But those that trust in God, those that have their minds set and have a relationship with God, they shall do great exploits. In other words, when the enemy comes up against them like a flood, they trust in the Lord that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. Uh, when they're in the heat of the battle and the enemy is trying to tempt them on every side, my God, they that know God's word, they that trust in God's word, they're able to stand in the midst of the battle. It's like putting on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that takes a heart of a champion. I love when I said that David had a heart of a champion. He had a heart of a champion when he went against Goliath. Because he had a heart of a champion and didn't forsake the covenant of his God. He was able to stand up against Goliath. In other words, he said in his own mind, I'm paraphrasing that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Uh, he wasn't intimidated by the sword and the shield of Goliath. David said that you come to me with your sword and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And David was able to boast, hallelujah, in the power and the might of his God. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is standing up against the armies of the Most High God and that's doing great exploits in the battle, in the heat of the battle. When you're able to stand up, thank you, Lord, and boast in your God. Thank you, Lord, when you're able to stand up knowing that your God has never lost a battle. Knowing that your God has always given you the victory. You can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And you can do great exploits in the name of the Lord. I'm reminded, brothers and sisters, that those who even go into battle, today is Memorial's Day. Thank you, Lord. And we honor our soldiers that gave their life in battle. I'm reminded of those that get a purple heart are the ones that do great exploits in battle. They've given their lives. They get wounded in battle. Thank you, Lord, fighting for that which is right. 
Hallelujah. My God in heaven. Those that want to be named with God and do great exploits. You've got to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. You've got to be willing to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. My God, you've got to understand that those that do great exploit with God, they walk by faith and not by sight. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of an old historic story by the name of one warrior by the name of Achilles. Y'all may remember the Battle of Troy. Thank you, Lord, that was fought in Greece. My God, hallelujah, and Achilles, he went to that battle. Thank you, Lord, and people still speak of his name. My God, but when, and when you understand the background story of that particular story, it almost never happened for him. His mother had to encourage him because Achilles didn't like the king and he was not going to fight in the battle. Uh, but his mom counseled him on the other side and say, son, you are a great warrior. Son, you are a great fighter. And the people in Rome, thank you, Lord, when you die, they're going to know who you are. And they may even erect a statue in your name. But if you don't go to this battle, son, hallelujah, your name will not be spoken of around the world. Your name will not be known, hallelujah, throughout the world as it is on today. So Achilles, he went out and fought that battle, hallelujah, and now his name has gone down in history. But my friend, I don't care if you know my name, Hallelujah, but the name that you ought to know is the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, if you don't know who I am, but know that who I fight for and his name is Jesus. They may not know your name, but know that who you fight for and that name is Jesus. The Bible says that there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved other than the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth in and they are safe. They may not know my name, hallelujah, but the exploits that I do in the name of Jesus, they will know his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. The early church, I feel my help coming on. The early church, my God, they went through trials and tribulation. My God, people tore them asunder. People threw them in jail. People talked about them. But because they were determined to do great exploits in the name of Jesus, that they rejoiced, that they were counted worthy to suffer for that name. If you are going to do great exploits in the name of Jesus, if you are going to do great exploits in the kingdom of God, you've got to go not in your power, not in your strength, but go in the name of Jesus. If you call on that name, people can be healed. If you preach in that name, people can be saved. In that name, the devils tremble. In that name, you can call on the name of the Lord and people receive salvation. If you want to do great things, if you want to do great exploits, the Bible says, walk by faith and not by sight. When we look in my conclusion here at the scriptures, at the word of the Lord, that doing great exploits in the name of Jesus, you've got to have a heart of a champion. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You've got to have a mind. And an inner strength. You've got to have an inter spiritual strength. And that inter spiritual strength comes through your relationship with the Lord, it comes from knowing Him. 
in the pardoning of your sins. It comes through knowing him in the power of his might. It comes through knowing him in keeping of his covenant, in keeping of his word. Because if you trust in God, there's no way for God to fail you. If you trust in God, there's no way for God to let you down. If you trust in God, he will always be on your side. Why? Because a cattle on a thousand hills, it belongeth unto your God. And he will always make a way. Oh, the Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He will always keep you from falling and to be able to present you faultless. So my friend, I don't care what battle you're facing right now. The scripture says, cast not away your confidence, which have great recompense or reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, that after you had resisted the temptation, that after you have counted it all joy, that after you have praised him, that after you have worshipped him, that after you have given him thanks, that after you have endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, that after you have stood still, you will see the salvation of the Lord. You will see God showing up in your situation and making all things right. You will see God in all of his splendor and all of his power and his might. He will come and that right early. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Who wants to be God's champion? Who wants to be God's champion in the midst of your battle? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. In the strength, knowing your God makes the difference. What makes the difference in a fight? You knowing whose you are and you knowing what you are. You got to know that when you come and show up to the battle, you show up in the name of the Jesus. The name of the Lord has power. The Bible says the devils tremble at that name. And if you got the devil trembling at that name and, and you operate in that name, you've already got the victory. Fighters say half the battle is the psychological battle. <laughs> That's why when fighters come together, they stare each other down, trying to intimidate one another. Why are they trying to get in their mind? Well, the devil already knows. <laughs> the devil already knows that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. The devil already knows that when you show up to the battle, he's, he's already lost. So therefore, you can overcome and do great exploits in the name of Jesus. Well, what do you mean, Pastor, by doing great exploits? Well, I mean, I'm not fighting in some foreign land. I'm not fighting off in some distant shore. But you may be fighting in your own home. Hallelujah. You can still do great exploits. You can still lift up a holy standard in your own home. You may be fighting in your school. You can still do great exploits. Hallelujah, in your school by calling on the name of Jesus. You may be fighting on your job. You can still do great exploits. Hallelujah, by resisting evil and keeping the covenant of God. Hallelujah, doing, calling on the name of the Lord. You may be fighting in your local church. Jesus. You can still do great exploits. Hallelujah. By keeping the covenant of the Lord your God. And he that shall come. He will come. And he will not tarry. 
You may be trying to do some things in your community. Hallelujah. Coming up against the evil that's in your community. Hallelujah. But you can do great exploits uh, by resisting the evil. When he said doing great exploits, what it's talking about there is resisting the evil, overcoming the evil, and doing good. God wants you to overcome evil by doing good. And that takes spiritual strength. That takes spiritual strength. And that spiritual strength comes from you knowing your God. Hallelujah. You got to know God to get spiritual strength. You can't know Buddha and have God-like strength. <laughs> you, can't, you can't know, hallelujah, Muhammad and have God-like strength. Hallelujah. If you want God's strength, Hallelujah, you've got to know him. Thank you, Lord. And you've got to know the power of his name. The Bible says, in my conclusion here, thank you, Lord, that, 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 that his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Mighty Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. You they may come to you with knives. They can come to you with spears and swords. Thank you, Lord. That's, that sounds like old time. They come to you now with guns. <laughs> Hallelujah. They, <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't take a gun. Don't take a knife to a gunfight. Hallelujah. But you can take the name of the Lord to any kind of fight. Hey, and come out more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Come in the name of the Lord. Stand in the gap. Trust in your God and do great exploits by resisting the evil and doing the good in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged on today. Hallelujah, glory. Be encouraged on today. Thank you, Lord, that your God is a God. Hallelujah, that sits high, but he looks low. Amen, and he got his hand up on you. Thank you, Lord. Another part of this scripture I didn't get into. I was going to talk about the Hall of Fame saints. My God, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Because they did great exploits, the Bible said that they were sawn asunder. Amen. Refusing, refusing to uh, get delivered because they were trusting in a better resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were thrown in lion's dens. Not, not wanting to, not go in that lion's den, but willing to go for the name of Jesus and so that they could receive a better resurrection. Hallelujah. Now you know that your mind got to be caught up, tangled up, tied up with the Lord to Amen. display that kind of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. To display that kind of trusting in the Lord. The early church, my God, they, they, they recounted themselves, they rejoiced because they counted themselves worthy, suffering for the name of Jesus. And in the new church, the church that we're in today, I know when I say new church, I'm talking about today's church. We are experiencing a pandemic, something I've never seen in my lifetime. Hallelujah. But, but we've got to do great exploits. Uh, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Uh, it's not the time to cower down. Uh, the Bible says if you shrink in adversity, your strength is small. Today, now is the time to stand up. Uh, the call on the name of Jesus. If you believe that he's a healer, walk by that faith. If you believe that his blood covers you, walk by that faith. Hallelujah. If you believe, hallelujah, that he is almighty, that he is able to do exceeding and abundant, walk by that faith. Hallelujah. My God. I thought I was done. Hey, come on, shout. But the Lord says, walk by that faith. Show, prove this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, 
You got to tell yourself, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to walk in his covenant. We're going to walk in his way. Don't allow the enemy, don't allow the devil to use flattery words to trick you, to move you from your steadfastness with God. All he wants to do is steal, kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. The, 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 the Bible in the book of Proverbs, it puts it, it puts it plain as the seducing of the devil, as the seducing of a woman. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it's, it's there in the book of Proverbs. And it talks about how a, a, a strong man can give in to seducing women and be turned into a piece of blood, uh, bread. And that's how the enemy operates. Hallelujah. The enemy tries to seduce you. You strong. You mighty. Hallelujah. You, you, got, you got hope. You got purpose. But the devil can seduce you through flattery words to bring your life to nothing. Just think back over your life. Those of you that have lived some type of life, uh, even 20, 30 years, hallelujah, look back over your life and think about people that were strong, that were mighty, and you look at them 20 years, 10 years now, you can see that because of they didn't give their life to the Lord, you see that their lives are turned to um, a piece of bread. Hallelujah. There's things like that that happens. My God, I was looking at an individual uh, on last week. I looked at his age, and I said, man, that guy's the same age as I am. But he looked like he's about 70, 80 years old. Why? Because he, he was tricked by the devil. Amen? That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to trick us. Hallelujah. But if we give our hearts and we give our minds to the Lord, we can do great things. We can do mighty things if you just trust in the Lord. And by way of conclusion, Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. He gave his life for our life that we might have life and that more abundantly. If you repent, turn to the Lord, the Lord will forgive you. He will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. You can join yourself to the covenant of the Lord and do great exploits. We thank you for this opportunity and this time. Hallelujah. We praise God for the service on today. Hallelujah. Be safe. Hey, hallelujah. Be sound. Thank you, Lord, and God will bless you. Uh, tune in once again to our service at, at, on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We'll see you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yeah. All right.